Welcome to PALS, it's Prof. Sanyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series. In today's lecture, we'll be studying the blood supply to the upper limb. We'll be looking at the various components of blood supply, starting from the arterial supply to venous drainage and then lymphatic drainage. We'll start with the arterial supply. In arterial supply to the upper limb, we'll be seeing one vessel that kept moving to the various parts of the upper limb and then at each point the names kept changing. The diagram we have here shows a summary of um, the entire blood supply to the upper limb. Now it actually starts from, uh, if we look at the point here we see the point of the arch of aorta and then it gives off a branch that we'll be interested in, which is the subclavian artery that will get to some point at the outer bit of the first rib and it will, the name will change to the axillary artery. The axillary artery will move down to the lower bit of teres major. The name will change to the brachial artery. The brachial artery will move from the lower bit of teres major to the level of the neck of radius the name will change to two other two names. Now at this point it will divide into its two terminal branches, one on the lateral side, the radial artery, and the other on the medial side, the ulnar artery. So basically these vessels make up the, the arterial supply to the upper limb. First we note the subclavian artery, Then we see the axillary artery, followed by the brachial artery, and finally the, the radial and ulnar arteries. So this will make up the content of our study of the arterial supply to the upper limb. For each of these vessels, we will look at the course of the vessel, we will now look at the branches, we will look at the distribution, we will also look at the relations. We will start with the subclavian artery. The chart here actually showed us how subclavian artery started. The right and left subclavian artery started from different points of, um, have different points of origin. Now, the, in the diagram we have here, this is the arch of aorta. This is the arch of aorta. And then, the arch of, this is the arch of aorta. And then the structure we have here is the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachio cephalic trunk. Now if we move to the left, the structure we have here is the left common carotid artery and the one we have here is actually the left subclavian artery, the left subclavian artery. Now if we come to the right, if we come to the right, we see the brachiocephalic trunk giving rise to one, the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. So the right subclavian artery picks origin from the brachiocephalic trunk behind the sternoclavicular joint, while the left subclavian artery picks origin directly from the arch of aorta and ascends behind the sternoclavicular joint. The subclavian artery will arch over the apex of the lung and then run to the axillary, to the axilla by passing across the first digitation of serratus anterior at the, behind the clavicle, at the midpoint of the clavicle. At this point, as soon as it passes through the outer border of the first rib, it loses its name and then, and then bears the name the axillary artery. 
Subclavian artery is divided into three unequal parts because it ran deep to a muscle called the scalenus anterior. So scalenus anterior divided it into the first part, second part, and third part. This is actually this is what the journey. This is what the journey is like. This is the arch of the elta. This, this is the arch of elta. Now this is the this is the left. This is the, this is the left subclavian artery. That's the the left common carotid. That's the brachiocephalic trunk. That's the right common carotid. And then this is the right subclavian artery. So we notice the scalenus anterior across. It ran deep to the scalenus anterior. And then the scalenus anterior then gave it these three parts. But the first part of the subclavian artery is the point between its origin and then the upper margin of the uh, anterior scaling muscle. And then the second part, which is called the posterior part, is the part that, that lies deep to the scaling muscle. And the third part is the part that ran from the upper margin of the scaling muscle to the outer border of the first strip. So these are the three parts. Before we leave the subclavian artery, we also look at the, three, the five branches from subclavian artery. So these are the five branches of the subclavian artery. We can help, we can, as a mnemonic, we can use vitamin C, D, vitamin C, D, to recall the name, the, the various branches from the subclavian artery. The first here is the vertebral artery. This is the vertebral artery. The next is the, the internal thoracic artery. T is the thyroid cervical trunk. Then C is the coastal cervical trunk. And then D is the descending scapular artery. So these, these branches make up the five branches that emanated from the subclavian artery. Now in these five branches, the, the upper three are seen in the first part of the subclavian artery, and then the, the fourth one is seen in the second part. Although there are some other variations where we also see the coastal cervical trunk in the first part. And then the last branch, the descending scapular artery, is seen in the third part. Now we move to axillary artery. The axillary artery is the chief supply, is the, is the main supply or the chief supply of a blood to the upper limb. Now in looking at the axillary artery, we will first of all look at the course, we will also look at the parts. And then we we'll look at the we we'll now look at the various branches. Now this artery, the diagram here will give us is a little summary of the axillary artery. The artery actually started from the outer border of the first rib. So the structure we have here, this is the first rib. This is the, that's the first rib. That's the first rib. It starts from the outer of the first rib and then run up to the lower border of teres major. So the muscle here is teres major. This is teres major. In its course, it ran deep to pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor divided the axillary artery into three parts, just as we noted in the, in the subclavian artery, where the anterior scaling muscle divided into three parts. Now the parts of axillary artery are first part or proximal part, second part or the posterior part, and third part or the distal part. We're going to take these parts one after the other, and then for each part, we'll look at the, the cause, the relations, the branches, and then the distribution. I will start with the first part. In the first part, the first part runs from 
the outer border of the first rib to the upper border of petralis minor. Now, the relations of this part. This part has anterior relations. For the anterior relations, we will be seeing the clavipectoral fascia covering, forming the anterior relation of this part. And also, we will be seeing the clavicular head of pectoralis major also forming the anterior relation of this first part. So we see the clavipectoral fascia covering it. Clavi clavipectoral fascia actually is the fascia that ran from the clavicle wrapping, wrapped around P minor and then went down to the axilla. So next to the anterior relation would be the posterior relation. In the posterior relation, we start with the muscles that form the, the muscle stair. We see the first two digitations of stratus anterior and also the nerve running to it as a long thoracic nerve. We also see the first intercostal space. Now we will see the first cord, the, one of the cords of brachial plexus. That is the medial cord. As we noted, the, the axillary artery is wrapped in an axillary sheath where we also have the cords of brachial plexus and then axillary vein within the sheath. So in this first part, we will see, we are seeing the medial cord being one of the posterior relations. The next relation we'll see will be the lateral relation. In the lateral relation, we'll be seeing the, this are the rest cords of brachial plexus, that is the posterior cord and the lateral cord. So the posterior cord and the lateral cord form the lateral relations. And then on the medial part, we'll see the axillary vein. The axillary vein is seen as the medial relation and it will continue being the medial relation even up to the third part. So, this done, we will now look at, the, look at the branches. So, we have the superior thoracic artery, superior thoracic artery as the, the only branch of the first part of axillary artery. So this, this is superior thoracic artery, the only branch. It's a small branch. It enters between the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor and it supplies both muscles. Next will be the second part. In the second part, we'll be looking at, we'll look at the extent. The extent of the second part of axillary artery, which we said is also called the posterior, posterior part, is the part that runs from the upper border of P minor to the lower border of P minor. It also has relations. In the anterior relation, we, of course, we can see, we're seeing the first structure forming the anterior relation, which is the pectoralis minor. Above the pectoralis minor, we see the pectoralis major. Now, we also have in the posterior relation. At this point, we are seeing the, see the subscapularis muscle. And then, in this second part, the cut of brachial plexus are now aligning to the axillary artery according to their names. So, in this posterior relation, we will also be seeing the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Next, we look at the lateral relations. In the lateral relations, we'll be seeing the lateral cord of brachial plexus. In the medial relation, we'll see alongside the axillary vein, we'll also see the medial cord of brachial plexus. Now let's look at the branches. We have two branches in this part. Remember, the first part has one branch, the second part has two branches. The two branches in this part are one, we have the thoracoacromial artery, thoracoacromial artery, two, we have the lateral thoracic artery. So these are the two these are the two arteries in the second part, the two branches. Now let's try to identify them. Now, in this pectoralis minor, 
That's P minor, let's label it the trellis minor. We're seeing the, the first branch of the axillary artery along, emerging from the point of the upper border of P minor, and that's tracheal artery. Now we see the second part, the second branch, coming from along the lower border of Petralis minor. So these two branches are what we'll be, cons what we'll be considering in the branches. First, the thoracoacromial artery. The thoracoacromial artery coming from the upper border of the Petralis minor will pierce the clavic pectoral fissure. If you recall, clavic pectoral fissure is here. It will pierce it alongside lateral pectoral nerve. As soon as it pierces the, the clavic pectoral fissure, it will divide it into its two four terminal branches. And those branches are what I call the A, P, C, D branches. A, P, C, D branches. The first branch is the acromial branch. The second branch is the pectoral branch. The third branch is the clavicular branch. And then the, the fourth branch is the deltoid branch. We will take a look at where they are distributed. Now, let's look at the acromial branch. The acromial branch will move towards the acromion, and there it will form part of the anosomosis around the acromion. The pectoral branch will emerge between the pectoralis major and minor muscle and then supply both muscles. The clavicular branch will run, will run towards the stenoclavicular joint and supply the stenoclavicular joint and also the subclavius. It runs beyond the subclavius to supply the, the, the clavicular bone. In fact, it's reported to be the nutrient artery of the clavicle. The deltoid branch is the one that runs within the deltoid groove. We'll look at the lateral thoracic artery. The lateral thoracic artery is the second branch of the lateral thoracic. It's the second branch that picks origin from the lower border of the pectoralis minor. Now what this does is it supplies the pectoralis major and minor muscles. It also supplies the serratus anterior muscles. Now in the females, this, this artery is actually well developed because it gives a significant supply to the breast. We will look at the third part of axillary artery.